you know, you know I've been listening to uh, YouTube, obviously, and um, a couple of uh, people in my feed, you know, black women in my feed had come up with two interesting videos that I have to respond to, that I felt the need to respond to. Well, the, the one is uh, Crystal and Kerosene, which I'm going to, you know, I'm in the process of uh, responding to uh, a video she did about Sandman. And that's going to be on an individual one. And the second one is what Chrissy is talking about. Uh, she talks about uh, the exceptional black man and what's going on with the uh, the gender dynamic in the black community, so to speak, that uh, has been basically the war has been waged for like was I would guess say the uh, the past ten years, basically because of Facebook. Facebook caused a lot of this stuff because since Facebook and and you get to see people's feelings um, posted in social media every day on your um on your wall and and uh, you basically get to interact with hundreds of people and 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 through uh, what is that six degrees of separation where you, and their friends become uh, they post what their friends say and you your friends post what you say and you know uh, blah 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 so you get a whole lot of people interacting talking about their feelings about uh, the other sex and that's basically what has sparked the what we call this uh, this uh, black bashing war before it was one sided because men didn't have access to uh, media at all you know the, the what men felt about black women didn't uh, come up. Now, what white people felt about black women did and uh, how they perceived black women, what you never saw in a lens with uh, very few exceptions in the, in the lens of what black men, black men felt about black women, at, at least above the uh, platform where people could actually hear it. I think the only Time that it was actually mentioned was uh, Shahara Azad Ali when she published her book in '87 about the Black Man's Guide to uh, to to Black Women. That oh man, that caused a, that caused a stir. Sisters were hot. Sisters were hot. I mean, absolutely livid. Uh, but they weren't. You know, they were never livid about the color purple, or they were never livid about. Waiting to Excel and, and and all the other movies and books and stuff like that that we're talking about the crazy ass black men that they had to put up with that were they were beating them and killing their babies and cheating on them and all the other stuff that black men were supposed to have done and you know and the evilness that they had and the, the pain they had projected upon the black the black woman. Eh. You know, for you know, for the better part of thirty years, that happened, and but it's just been the last ten years where social media has given black men a voice. And guess what? Again, sisters are hot. But you know, that's that's neither here nor there. I don't know if I'm going to leave that part in. But uh, you know, I have to commend Chrissy for being honest, and I think I've said that to her before. You know, I think I put it in the comments section that black men should leave Chrissy alone about. Criticizing her. I understand that your criticism does help and there's a certain amount of criticism in the comment section that's necessary when you disagree with somebody. But the thing is, I think we should encourage women like Chrissy. And I think that's why black men follow her and actually subscribe to her rather than other women that have a lot of negative things to say because she is honest. And I know Chrissy thinks that we're, we're uh, being too negative with her, but you should see some of the comments in my comment section uh, that black men that disagree with me. And there's a whole, you know, there's a lot of them. Uh, and sometimes I have to tell the brothers to tone it down. You know, I've been called a few things. Uh, uh, me in my uh, MGTOW stance, you know, because I have a MGTOW channel. I've been called a few things. Now, brothers, uh, they get... Uh, they can get obnoxious, but they don't get too obnoxious because basically uh, they can't stand the weight. They're not going to get in and they're not going to get into the books and they're not going to get into the to the study and actually wage war. And they know that. So they'll make a comment and, and they, you know, and move on. But they're highly. But after a while, they're highly receptive to logic. And that's what I want to tell Chrissy. They're highly receptive to logic, you know, and I know and women like to deal in feelings. And if you, I've done 
well, more than a few videos. I put a post a couple of them up on um, my Itmore channel. But uh, I did a whole I did a whole series on 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 that on my MGTOW channel. And so I think I'll port some of that over. But I'm glad that she's growing. She said that she's growing. It's, you know, she said she's been on YouTube a year and, and, and that she is growing. And that's good because you're hearing a lot of voices. And uh, even though you hear a lot of voices, they may agree with you, may disagree with you. That's always good if if what they're saying is accurate. You know, I heard this a long time ago. Uh, it was on a a, a a TV show when I was younger uh, called The White Shadow when I was a teenager. And there was this uh, kid, it, you know, at this 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 high school and the counselor to, uh, that was uh, basically misunderstood and the the black counselor came up to him and told him how it is with 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 the world and and what you need to be concerned about she said there's only four kind of people people that like you for the right reasons people that don't like you for the you know people that like you for the wrong reasons people that don't like you for the right reasons and people that don't like you for the wrong reasons and she said, there's only two, only two people that you need to be concerned about is the people that like you for the right reasons and the people that don't like you for the right reasons, because that's where the accuracy lies. So it's it, I don't care whether people like like me or dislike me as long as they're accurate. Because if they're accurate, I can learn from both of those people. When I put out information, I've learned this over the years. It's uh, it's something that I learned 20 years ago. Uh, it, it's from a book called The Lucifer. Uh, I think I, I got to look up the book, and not The Lucifer Syndrome, but uh, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a book about uh, paleo a uh, uh, paleo uh, biology by by, uh, by Howard Bloom. Okay, he's a, a a paleopsychologist. That's what he calls himself. And uh, he he came up with this thing called the viral meme. And I put a lot of viral memes into um, my videos and the information I put out. And I put it out there for a particular reason. And then I've learned that if you put out a viral meme, you put out information a particular way, people will catch that viral meme and they will spread it. And if you hear it come back in a certain way, you know that that whoever said it has absorbed that information. They've actually listened to you. And I, I commend you. You know, I know you didn't drop a comment or whatnot, but I commend you for listening to the information the way that I put it out, even though you didn't like it. And I've heard that you didn't like it uh, when I responded to you. But I put that information out a particular way. And I put it out a particular way that was supposed to be accurate to the way I, I, I saw the world. Because I'm gonna tell you something about me. I'm an old man, yes. And it seems that I'm out of touch, yes, it seems that way. But it took me 30 years to gather all this information. This stuff did not come overnight. It took a lot of crazy ass girlfriends, a crazy woman that I had kids by, and raising two daughters, and a son and, and coming back on the other side to gather this information. This is hard learned, hard fought information. And, and I have to relearn it because I have a grandson by a daughter that didn't do it the right way. So I'm relearning about women because my, my daughter's not my little girl anymore. She's a, she's a black woman and she's going through black women's shit. So I can tell you firsthand by not only by not only being raised by a black woman. Mating with black women, but also raising black women. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I didn't talk to everybody. I didn't talk to uh, black hotel folks is it, that you want to call it black conscious folks, black psychologists. Uh, that's why I became a Gnostic, because I needed to understand my children and what's going on with them, not only physically, logically, but spiritually, read all kinds of books, studied black women in and out. And like I said, studied Howard Bloom, which which was which was a key because he related the, the nature of female 
not as a woman or as a human woman, but female from the female from uh, uh, from the creation of the universe. There's a female side as a as a um, I'm going to give you a little tip. If you're talking about Star Wars, there's a light side and there's a dark side. There's a Jedi and there's a Sith. The dark side, you notice the Sith are more powerful, more restraint, more uncontrollable and more powerful because they they because they, they trying to control the dark side. The dark side is a feminine. The light side has to be more controlled. That's just a dialectic of the of the force. There's only one force. Just like there's only one human race, it would just how you express it is different. But anyway, that's an aside. But I'm glad you have come this thus far and I'm glad you are learning because now you are maturing. You're coming out of your 20s. You have basically learned who you are and you're learning what you have to work with as any human being. Black men, it takes uh, it's going to take him a couple of years longer. When he stops thinking about his penis so much. That's something else I put in, in my on my MGTOW channel. I may port that over. I may redo that because it has to be done for specifically for black men. But I want to say something about pre-1985. You were born in 1985. Okay. Uh, my son was born in 1986. My daughter Born in 1988, I got my last daughter was born in 1995. All millennials, all millennials. But a lot of this stuff I've lived through. What you're talking about, I've lived through it. And the stuff that I didn't live through, why I, I, I sat on the knee of my grandmother and she used to tell me about her stories when she was young. And how she had her children and and the, and her husbands and her raising nine children. Because I was her favorite and I would sit on her. I would sit next to her and she would she would just talk and she would tell me everything. So I have a very, very broad knowledge of the female side where I worked, where they were, where I chose to work. It's 90 percent black. And like 60, like 70 percent were female. OK, so and then we're talking about, you know, over the course of my career. I have personally, personally known, personally known by name where they lived, who they were. I would say personally known at least twenty five hundred women. What their name is, what their kid's name is. Um over uh known them over time some of them i've known for you know i had known for 30 years when i first started my you know started the job because i was on the same job for basically 30 you know almost 35 years i saw their kids grow up i saw the tussles that they have with their with you know with their significant others with their husbands i saw them cheat i saw them being cheated on I saw a whole bunch of stuff. So basically what I'm saying is I'm, I've, this is something that I've experienced. I've seen the black community go down. I've seen the gender dynamic go down. I, you know, you're talking about your dating D boys. OK. I grew up when I came of age, there weren't there, 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 there weren't any D boys. There you know, D boys, you know, it, People that sold drugs or at the time when I came up, the people, the, the, the basic uh, people that sold drug in the, uh, drugs in the community were um, weed sellers. That's all they sold. I knew a lot of them personally. You know, I, you know, I've, I won't tell all my business, you know, basically I played ball with a relative of the one of the biggest cocaine sellers in the world, which is uh, which is an Escobar. You know, I, I played basketball with uh, Louis Escobar, who was who was Pablo Escobar's uh, uh, nephew. OK, so. I have an intimate knowledge of 
what was going on because it was going on around me. One of my best friends, when I started my career, one of my best friends, his brother was a chemist. His brother taught him how to basically cook rocks. And this is back in 1981 when when basically all the, everybody else, you know, in, in Los Angeles had to have money. Be, you know, if you heard about Richard Pryor, you heard about the NBA basketball players and all them folks that had to have a lot of money because they free based. You know, John Belushi basically uh, speedballed himself off of cocaine. OK, there was free basing. It was a very expensive habit. So the thing is, I was around when D boys were coming up. When 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 Freeway Ricky started distributing the stuff, and you saw the the uh, you know the the cocaine runners, cocaine hustlers on the street. Now I saw that shit happen in front of me. You know, like I like I said in one of my other videos, that shit happened in front of me, no more than two miles from where I'm sitting, and I saw the strawberries. Uh, selling themselves uh, along the street, a whole whole street. You could you could basically drive six miles and there'd be nothing but strawberries strung out on that shit. I saw well-to-do women, well-to-do women that had everything. I'm talking about everything. Had the big house, uh, lived in what you call ball. We you know uh, Windsor Hills, ball Hills. We used to call them hillbillies. I saw them do that shit. I saw I saw that that flashy money and that flash that, that that those flashy cars and them dudes that were too ignorant to keep it in their pocket pull these women and not just one of them, three, four, five of them. And you know what I'm talking about, Chrissy, because you live that lifestyle. I saw that shit. I saw that shit from from the ground up. Because this is where the, where this is where it fucking started. I saw all that shit. I saw it pull down our community in a span of five years. I saw it destroy our community. It was very difficult to find a pretty black woman that ain't had, that didn't have a D boy. So all the other folks that's jumping all over Chrissy, that track record preceded her. She grew up in that shit. I don't know her mother, but you know, if her mother was a pretty woman, she fell to too many of them fail. And there was a complaint by the older women at the time. You know, we talking about 30, you know, we talking about 35 years ago. How how these thugs or these D boys would come in and they wouldn't have just one uh, one uh, educated female or well to do female. They'd have two, three of them. And they wouldn't have two kids they'd have they 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 have 10 kids and that's where this shit started but anyway i'm going far far afield that's that's another story for another day you know i didn't want to get too far afield but i i want to get into the main point of, about what she said about what happened before she was born and how black men have not done what they're supposed to do and have not tried to lead their women have not tried to protect their women and that's bullshit. Any struggle, any struggle is always led by men. I don't care. You know, uh, you're going to have those rare occasions where you're going to have a, a, a woman or two stand up and be prominent. No revolution, no movement has ever been led by women. You got you have to have men behind it. I've never seen a slave revolt led by women. Your main abolitionists weren't women, they were men. The black, you know, the, the you know, the, it was men that had to win the respect of white men to end Jim Crow. I mean, there's a lot of reasons Jim Crow ended. We, you know, we're not going to get into that. But to win the respect of, of, of white men by going to fight in World War I and fighting in War, World War II, which eventually led to the segregation of the military, which led to the desegregation of the black folks as, as, as a whole. It wasn't women that did that. The Black Panthers were not led by women. The civil rights movement was not led by women. women. Women were there with us, but it was not led by women. 
Women weren't getting their heads bashed in and getting lynched and getting shot. The Pullman strike, which is which was the first black union by Randolph, was not led by women. There were no women on that picket sign. Those black Wall Streets were not led by women. The great migration that took that took us away from Jim Crow and took us north and took us west were not led by women. Those were black men. Those were black men leaving home with nothing but the shirt on their backs, trying to make a better way and then bringing their families. No, I was, you know, me as a boomer, I was at the tail end of the great migration in the 60s when we came to Los Angeles from Texas. My mother didn't come first. She had children. She followed my father after he came here and he had established himself. Now, a black black men and black women have always been contentious. That has always been the case. Did we fight? Yes. Was there domestic violence? Of course there was. Was there cruelty? Yes, there was. You better believe it. But to say that black men have never led you, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. There's always reasons why women, and we're talking about women all over the world, do things. It's because their primary, their primary incentive, their, their prime directive is different from men. And I've posted more than a few videos telling, you know, telling young black men that her loyalty does not lie with you. That's a female thing, has nothing to do with color. And I want, I, I've always said that because I want young men to understand what they're, what, they're, what they're dealing with. And it doesn't matter the color of the woman. Cultures, culture sprinkled in controls that prime directive and controls that feminine nature, that, that, that dark side, as you, as you want to call it, as I want to call it. A female nature. It's, it's got to be controlled. It's com be, it has to be controlled by culture, by society. And the society has let basically that, that uh, uh, untamed female nature run wild. It just has. And it's spreading all throughout the world. Because you see the same shit with Korean women, with Japanese women, with women in uh, uh Women on the continent now starting to do the same thing. You see the same thing in the Middle East. It has absolutely nothing to do with color. We black people are just on the bleeding edge. That's all it is. What I would know the reason I have an it more channel is because I want black men to understand what they're up against, so they won't be so butt hurt. I, I'm probably going to have to do something about women so they can understand themselves. The biggest problem that I see is that women don't understand themselves. Y'all really don't. You really don't understand yourself. And it took me 30 years to figure that out. I, you know, it, it didn't take me long to figure out what went to predict what women would do, how they did it and what they did. It's like clockwork. It, it took me five years to, under to understand what women did. It took me the next 20 to understand why they did it, to fully understand why they did it. And it came out to the, the, the other. We, it comes out on the other side that women actually don't know why they do shit. They don't. Women do not understand women. They feel themselves, but they do not understand why they do what they do. That's why most women hate men going their own way, because what men going their own way talk about is why women do shit. And if you understand why women do shit and you sprinkle in the cultural aspect of black women and the black experience, Black women are not hard to figure out. You're really not. You think that what you're going through is exceptional because you only focus in on your little bubble, which is very female. All women figure that the universe revolves around them, how they feel and what they think, and it radiates out. And that's where women stay stuck in that bubble. Hell, I'm going to have to do a series on it. I was thinking about that. Because I did a series for men on esoteric philosophy and, 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 and the, the internal workings of how men think and that, that particular journey of a men's psyche. I'm going to have to do the same thing for women, especially for black women, because black women, women 
especially and black women particularly do not understand themselves. Y'all do this. Y'all do stupid. Y'all do stupid stuff and y'all don't even know why you do it. And that's what frustrates men. It's not that you bash. It's not that you call us out on our bullshit because we you know, we if you call us out on our bullshit and you did it with not how it's affecting you, because that's what that's what it comes back to, how men's bullshit affects affects women, not the how it affects the community, because basically you really don't care about the community. You could you care about the community because the community serves you and it always comes back to you. If you can kind of push yourself aside or push how you feel aside about how men affect you and just direct deal directly on men and try to understand men for men in a perspective of men, then you wouldn't get that pushback. In fact, you get a lot of brothers talking to you about their problems and what they go through. Oh, geez, I'm, you know, this is getting long. I'm going to have to make a part two because I'm, it's, it's, I'm doing a, a, a Sergeant Willie P hour and a half shit. Uh, I'm going to have to break them. I might have to break this up. The reason that you don't feel protected, the reason that you don't feel promoted, the reason that you don't feel uplifted. And, and this is just feelings. You, you're on you're on target as far as what the key is. But you just can't cross over to it because you haven't learned to put aside your feelings and get in and, and tap into logic. Because if you tapped into logic and understand, then you can understand why you feel the way you feel, what triggers it the way you feel, why you don't feel protected, why you don't feel promoted and why you feel that you need to in the way that you think that you need to and how you can correct the problem, which is what frustrates men. Stop getting in your feelings. Stop looking to the outside of why things happen and solve the problem. The problem is not men. Your problem is not men. Your problem is you. I tell men the same thing. Their problem is not women. Their problem is them. First thing I tell any young man, any young man coming up, no matter what his age is, and I just talked to, tutored a young man who happens to be 12 years old whose studies was going down, who couldn't concentrate. And I was tutoring him for 45 minutes and he couldn't he couldn't get what I was talking to him about. He couldn't get the math that I was trying to teach him, even though it was simple. So I asked him a question. Where is your head at? And this is key. This is key not only for women, but this is key for all the other men that happen to be listening to this. I asked him as a young man, as a 12 year old, where's your head at? And he said it wasn't here. So I asked him where. OK, so if it's not here, where's where is your head? He said it was someplace else. I said, oh, really? Someplace else like where? He didn't want to say and he gave me that look. And I know that look because I've been a 12 year old boy and I, I simply asked him, what is her name? And his face dropped because he's wondering how I knew that there was a girl behind this. You're 12 years old, your hormone, hor hormones are kicking in and your dick is talking to you and you can't control it because it is pushing all these hormones and all these feelings through your head and it's clouding your logic. That's what I tell black men. Your hormones and your feelings are clouding your logic. You have to get control of your dick. If you can't get control of your dick, you're going to have problems. I would tell that to any man. You're butt hurt about why a woman is not choosing you. Because your dick is talking to you. And it's telling you what you need to have and what you want, because you haven't gotten control over. It. And then you become you, you go to school and become successful. Your dick is still talking to you. You're not your feelings aren't hurt because you weren't chosen. Your dick's feeling is hurt because you weren't chosen because you wanted to do the same thing as the D-boys. You just couldn't. That's the gender dynamic. Women have another side. 
Women have another side. It's their feelings and their hormone ho- hormones and their prime directive that they're not controlling. That's why they do stupid shit with their fucking womb. The only thing is, is that not control women not controlling their womb is a hell of a lot more destructive to the black community than a man not controlling his dick. A man not controlling his dick brings him down. A woman not controlling her womb not only brings her down, brings that child down, and it brings the whole the, the rest of the family that has to come in and support. It it brings them down. It put, it weighs in on them because that child is not brought in properly. The Africans knew that. That's how come women were never allowed to pick their own husband. That womb was too valuable because you brought in life and you can't trust a woman who's emotional, especially a young woman who's emotional and hormonal to have the power over life and death. Women have the power over life and death. And you can't give that power to a 14 year old, a 15 year old, to an 18 year old and maybe not even 20 year old. Because you can see what kind of destruction it causes in the fucking black community. So no matter what men do, as far as trying to clean it up, it doesn't matter. You can't clean up half a million babies born out of wedlock every year that are not, that, that, that are not brought in properly into the collective, into the community, you can't clean that shit up. You cannot clean it up. You can have smart brothers from here to doomsday. You can't clean it up. White people cannot clean it up. What do you think welfare was for? The welfare was supposed to be a bridge. You weren't supposed to go to white daddy. Feminists and, and the limousine liberals thought that this patch would actually work. It doesn't work. You cannot, the government cannot clean this up. That's how come you have these fucking child support laws that are onerous because they figured out they can't clean this shit up. No government, no community, no society can ask, can clean that shit up when you give irresponsible people the power of life and death. If black men got off their ass, Right now, I'm going on a rant, so I might have to put just the rant in this. If black men got off their ass right now, every black man in America signed up to mentor and try to help clean up this black community. And they and they just say just just for instance, say they were successful. They brought in every they brought in every child and mentored them and they brought they cleaned up the community with thugs and whatnot and say, just for instance, that they could do that in a year. Guess what happened next year? You have another half a million black babies that are born out of wedlock and you have to start the cycle all over again. The only way to do it is you, you know, you have to put, you have to stop the water from coming in. You got to put a finger in the dike, literally. And the only people that have control over life and death are black women. They are the they they're not responsible for the problem, but they are the source of the problem because you can't get to the cause because you can't get you can't fix the dam. You can't fix the dike with just a finger. You you have to stop the water from coming in first before you can fix the, the dam. You have to stop the water from flooding. You got to stop that first. Anytime you see flooding or a dam breaks, what's the first thing they do? You see the you see the sandbags because you got to stop the water first. And then you can go back and you can fix the problem. We can't we cannot stop the water. We can't stop you from choosing wrong. We can't stop you. You get, you know, the the government is giving you permission to have these babies out of wedlock and you're choosing to do this. And you are perpetuating the cycle. So now, so now you're having babies, you know, the black women, you're having your, your mother had babies out of wedlock, had three or four husbands or three or four different guys. That filters down not only to her, but also the boys who think it's OK. 
they perpetuate the same cycle. Now you have two people, two generations, male and female, that think it's okay to do what, just, what was just done. And they do it. What you think is going to happen to the next generation? They're going to do the exact same thing, but worse. So now we got four generations of this shit that has been circulated when they could have stopped that problem back in 65 and the civil, civil rights. They could have stopped that shit. What did they do? They enhanced that shit. They made it worse. And black women fell over the dam. Well, they, they thought black women will respond like white women. That's what they thought. They thought they thought if they gave black men jobs, which the civil rights is supposed to be a jobs program to basically get the men back to work, get them back into their families, get them back to where they could lead their families and they could fit in. It didn't work. It worked the opposite way. And black women chose wrong, didn't chose wrong because it was part of their culture to, to go that way. It was the information was there. They just didn't see it. And it got worse. And it's getting worse. And the only thing we're waiting for is to hit bottom. <sighs> I think I'm about to redo this because this is rambling. I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to this and I'm going to redo this to where my thoughts a little bit more clear.